요새 카메라를 이렇게 페이스를 쫓아가는 카메라가 있던데. 페이스 어? 디텍션에서 이렇게 쫓아가는 거 있으면 좋겠는데. 어, 이 녹음은 혹시 이 수업 본 사람 녹음은 잘 됐어요? 네. 오케이. 뭐내 얼굴 뭐 봐봤자 뭐 특별한 거 없으니까. 어, 아니면 여기다가 이렇게. 어, 아이 라이크 투 어나운스 댓 아. 투마로 아 인바이트 에이 스피커스 아 프롬 아 인디아 아 IIT 아 히가 라 PhD 인 IIT 앤 히스 스페셜티 이스 디 CNT 카본 나노 튜브 앤 그래핀 So the, the topic, uh, the composite we are covering right now is pretty much classical composite. Carbon fiber reinforced or glass fiber re reinforced uh, composite. That's a pretty much conventional, uh, typical composite. But my expectation is that um, CNT or graphene reinforced composite will be commercialized very soon. So I'd like to give you an idea uh, what, what, what kind of material property, what chemical property, and, and so on. Uh, so it's always good to know uh, what can we do with the CNT and, and graphene. Uh, we need to uh, have some uh, pre-knowledge about that, uh, those kind of uh, advanced material. And, and, and for that purpose, I like to invite him to give an, uh, some uh, seminar, one hour, and, and give you some chance to, to ask a question and so on. Actually, his name is uh, Santosh. Uh, he he uh, visit, uh, he came to our lab as a postdoc uh, for uh, one year, uh, actually many, many years. And he he will perform a very much advanced uh, research uh, with myself, and uh, so I'm very happy to have him here. Actually, he arrived last week, and he found a uh, room. Uh, okay. Uh, where are we? We are at Okay, so now we are able to get all ABD matrix um, ABD matrix so given Load we are able to find a deformation, strain and curvatures. Now, strain and curvature is the deformation of a laminate, right? Laminate, implant deformations, and implant uh, bending curvatures is a laminate level. Now, next step is that how much stress is caused or developed inside the ply. Okay, e each ply will be. Uh, will be subject to certain level of stresses. So our purpose is to, to predict whether the material or apply will fail or not. So let's say we bend too much or extend too much, uh, the laminate will deform and each ply, we don't know which ply, uh, but some ply will fail. So it's called failure analysis. So far, we have covered all ABD matrices comes from what? Q, stiffness. So in structural uh, mechanics and behavior, has a twofold, two category. One is the stiffness-based deformation, right? Stiffness. And the other one is what? Strength. 
So we uh, basically cover most of the stiffness related uh, behavior. Now we, what we like to do is the uh, strength, failure. This is very important uh, in the design of real structures. Given certain type of load, and we have a laminate extension and curvature. Now we like to know which ply will fail. So that is the uh, very basic step toward uh, toward strength design of our composites. Okay. Uh, so what I like to do is that given given this strain and curvature, next one is how to calculate the ply strain. And then ply stress, and then compare with the strengths we like to know which ply will fail. Okay? Uh, please re uh, remember uh, the step. Next one is uh, what? Since we, are, we calculated laminate deformation, next one is the ply strain and ply stress and strengths compared to uh, strengths and failure analysis, okay? Um, so th 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 this is the uh, step, calculation of apply strengths and apply stress. Uh, can I, using the finite element solution? Yes. I, I cannot see the curvature term. I right. only I only see I only check the strain stress, but I cannot check the you, you cannot term. okay you cannot get the curvature, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see. <coughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But when you model a certain structures, you have a two way of doing that. One is just a uh, uh, solid element, a uh, brick element. Uh, you can use a brick element to model. And the other one is the shell element. The shell element, uh, if your structure is relatively thin compared to a structure, let's say, uh, where is it, the two, two? This one, while well, it's kind of uh, thick, but let's say this is a kind of a thin, then if we use, we model this one uh, using finite element, we can choose either 3D brick element or shell element. But I highly recommend to use a shell element uh, whenever possible. So once we have a shell element, okay, that's a good point. So I would like to spend some time to, to So let's say we have a structures like that, okay? Oops. Like that. And then a, 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 a clamp and subject to a certain load. And rear, any structure would have a certain thickness. Now, this is a real problem statement. Now, how, how do we analyze that? Now we have, we are using, uh, we can use a uh, mesh, 3D brick mesh. So this, we, we divide all the mesh like that and here and there. So if we, we take a look, one, one of them is like six nodes, uh, sorry, eight nodes and six surface. Hexa, we call hexa element. And in this case, uh, now the most difficult part in analyzing composite structures using FM is the layout sequence. Let's say uh, this guy has uh, many, many layers. For example, this one, well, it looks like the one solid, but in real world, how many layers? You remember? Let's say 100 layers. Okay, 100 layer, 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 layer. So each one has a different angle. 
and this one is like that. But in most case, one time this way and coming this way and this way, this way. So each layer will have a different angle and consists about 100 or 200 layers. How do we model this? It's not easy, but this is a critical uh, uh, skill. So let's say uh, each one, let's say uh, each one, we, 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 we can have a, a, a several way. Just first, ply equal one element. Then how many element to, do we need? As many as uh, a number of ply, right? So in this case, very thin, very thin, a brick element. And, 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 and goes like that. So if, as I mentioned, this is the um, a 100 plies, then we, we would need 100 elements through this direction, right? 100, so 100 elements as many as plies. And in circumferential directions, how many uh, would we need? Well, to make a circle, if the number is too rough, okay, this is a real circle, and if we divide like a 10, then uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So this circle cannot be modeled as the circle because we model as the uh, 10. So it's extremely important to use many elements, especially along the curved surface. So in this case, from my experience, we need to have about 36, about 36. So this way, 36, times thickness 100 times, now how many elements do we need? Uh, well, many, huh? uh, especially this is the a bending behavior, bending behavior uh, uh, to be captured, we need a lot of elements. Say, uh, say uh, 50. So how much is this element wise? 5,000, uh, 180, right? And, and so 180,000 elements. And this is element and node wise, node, node means, you know, each, this, this, that, 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 that. Each node will be like 200, thousand node okay this is the a uh, brick element brick element this way second way of a brick element is that you just use a one big element okay uh, through from here to there we just use a one brick element now this guy has the multiple layered multiply layered how much layer we have inside we have a 100 100 plies but we just need a one big element this is called layered element this is a not element this is a one element but just one material <coughs> For layered element, you need to specify all the layer sequence. Abacus, ANSYS, Nastran has that kind of capability. So you as a on an, uh, structural solver, you need to decide which one you need to choose. Either this one or that one. Of course, in layered element, you don't need to have only one. You could have a, a half and a half, like a two element, so that each one will have a 50 plies. And, and you have a several choice. 
Okay, this is the choice for 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 the case of a brick element. Okay. Now another choice is the we call shared element. Shared element. Now uh, we only model as a surface like that. This can be a homework if you wish. Uh, share element, okay, share element now is a, a surface. Now the big problem, well, very important point is that how we model this surface? Because in real, real structures, size is a, is a, either a, a that or a that, and, but how much, how do we model this real R? Because it's just a surface. Say this is the R i and R zero, and this R will be R zero, or R i, or half of it. I mean, uh, average. You have a choice. Very fortunately, you can use any of them. Share element has the capability is called offset. Say you start from here as a CAD program, you have a, all the CAD, and then you import to a CA tool, Abacus. Now you have a choice of this. And shell, uh, you can select our surface as a shell element. But in that case, let's say you chose this one as the surface, but the, when you layer it, you, you need to have a, a call offset. Offset means this surface, okay, this surface, this is a, uh, the surface means now you have a mesh like that, right? Meshy, this is a surface, and rear uh, volume will go, goes like that. So this is the real volume, like this. So this is the uh, real volume, and this is the offset you can specify. I'll, this is the uh, R zero minus R i. So if we specify as offset R zero minus R i, then this shell understand thickness goes inside. If you model as using the inner surface, and then give the shell element uh, offset as the this way. Then program understand. This is a very useful uh, way of modeling, analyzing uh, a, uh, these real structures using shared element. Why, why shared element is so important and useful? Well, let's count the number of nodes. This one, each one, let's say we use the 36. So this way, we also use the 36 times we use the 50, that's the all element we need. So which is about uh, just 1,800 nodes on the element. So which will be, we don't know exactly how many numbers, but about 2,000. So compared to this, this is a very fast. Another one is that each, each brick element, we we need to know, understand degree of freedom. So each one has a, a degree of freedom, this way, that way, only three degree of freedom, just movement. But in shared element, each node, you have a this, oops, this, that, degree, three degree of freedom, and three rotational degree of freedom. So if, so this one actually the unknown is the times three, but this is a times six. But still, this is a much less, so much faster. And also much sometimes accurate. Accurate means why it could be more accurate than 3D? Because if you choose this one, this one is the only a linear, linear assumption through the thickness but this is the curved and, and, and curvature, and curvature can be very well understood. Okay, anyhow, this is a, just a preliminary um, introduction. Now his question is that 
if we use the shell element, okay, I, I will zoom this shell, and depending on each node has degree of freedom, displacement, and then once we got the, all the displacement, I will call just displacement, but displacement has a UX, UI, UZ, rotation, 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 six. There is the A during final element we call B matrix. If you multiply B matrix, now what we get? We get implant strain and curvature. That is the definition of a B strain. So D is the unknown, how many? This much. So we got the, all the displacement and D is the strain displacement relation. We multiply, we got this strain and curvature, which now give us all uh, this one and, and this one and all the curvature exactly. Same as this guy this guy. So this epsilon zero and curvature will be obtained from FM, okay? Now, uh, there is a step called post-processing in FM process. Post-processing is nothing to do with the global solver. Now we are looking at the only element. We are we having that one. And each, each layer, each layer, all the information is already in each element, each element. So it has all the layup information inside. So I really appreciate his questions because we can understand what we are studying relate to a finite element, okay? So finite element, we are looking at just one element, shared element, that's exactly the laminate in our definitions. Anyhow, uh, his question is that, oh, we have a epsilon zero, say X, a one, epsilon two, and I'm sorry, epsilon two. Uh, and epsilon six, and we have uh, all the curvature. So curvature one, curvature two, and curvature six. Now it's a post-processing. Uh, I do know that ANSYS has the capability of showing all these terms. Okay, so, uh, but in any FEM, you have to tell them what you want to look at before performing job, performing a calculations. So before you start and once you model, you, before you start to solve, you have to tell the FM, oh, you like to have uh, a output, you want strain, curvature, stresses, and failure index. There are so many, so many outputs. So FM, they don't calculate until you ask. So be sure to ask what you like to look at, and then you click, and then, post-processing, you are able to see that. I'm almost sure, I'm not 100% sure in the abacus, but I'm sure you get the coverage and everything in abacus, uh, NC, um, NCs. Uh, but if you don't see that, most likely you didn't ask. You didn't ask when you tried to solve it. But anyhow, uh, okay, well, if, we, the program does not so, uh, support that kind of function, then what you can do? There is a, a very special options or capability which most of the final element program provide is that user subroutine. User subroutine is the, a, just a full chain code and then you can a, develop your own user subroutine to get for the purpose of a, get a post-processing, uh, you want to calculate all the post-processing coverage and things, or you can define your own material property. So you pretty much a, uh, open, open to you. So uh, that, that's why 
uh, we as an engineer now need to know how to program to be able to communicate to with the uh, software and, and computers. So anyhow, uh, it, it is very important. And I also uh, showed you that Visual Basic macro in Excel, exactly same concept. Excel has their own built-in functions, but if you like to develop your own function, well, use Visual Basic as a macro. Well, studying macro is very difficult. Yes, then you record whatever action you do, then all the language is automatically written, then you can easily change. Abacus exactly the same. Abacus has the uh, built-in uh, script using the Python. So Python, you can code, you can generate the geometry and you can do many things. And also Python can be automatically written by a uh, program and according to your actions. Okay. Any other? But anyhow, uh, is there anybody who cannot access any any uh, FM tools? Okay, anybody who does not have experience on on FM CA tools? Raise your hand. Okay. Is there anybody who has experience on, uh, in, in CA tools? Okay. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> how about you? No experience. Okay. Uh, now you have a what to do. <laughs> so I highly recommend you to use a CA tools. If you don't have any account, let me know. I can provide you uh, how, how to access our workstation servers and, and, and use NCC and other tools. Uh, my plan is that in, in the, for the final exam, uh, the, the, we will have uh, several choices, but uh, some of them uh, relate to a uh, uh, final element modeling of these real structures and analyze the composite structures, okay? Uh, so, uh, well, I will, I'm not gonna make it very complicated, uh, but uh, it was really good to, to understand the final element results um, of the composite structures for under, um, subject to uh, some kind of mechanical load. Okay, so uh, again, please, this is the step. Um, we have all the ABD metrics for the final element case in each a, uh, a layer. See, in FEM, as I mentioned, these brick element, they cannot provide ABD metrics and curvatures because the brick element, only three degree of freedom, has nothing to do with curvatures. So if you like to get the curvature, you always have to play with the shell element, okay? And, and so what they do, in final element, what they do with these key metrics uh, uh, element, when you specify layer sequence, the first step they do is get ABD metrics with each element according to all the layer sequence. Okay, uh, that is what they do. Um, so what we do now is pretty much the same procedure as in FM shell element. So ABD matrix, we are already, which are already um, calculated, and this is the external load. For element, final element case, 
what is the uh, N and M? Well, they, they, these are a element force which you will calculate from all global, global procedures. Uh, I hope we have another chance to uh, uh, talk more about the shared element. Okay, anyhow, this is the given and this is the output. Now, as I mentioned, what we like to do is that to get this, okay, this is a mid plane. And this is the AZ, and this is AZ. Uh, so we got the epsilon Z and curvature. And how do we get the, uh, let's take a look at this guy, I mean, at, at this one. Um, okay, this, this guy. How do we, how much the, uh, this is the uh, price angle like that, and how much the strain? Okay, strain, and in this case, will be just a uh, three strain. So given this six components of a laminate in plane and laminate curvature, how do we get the supply strain? That is a step, calculation of all the axis strain at Z. So apply located at Z, and how do we calculate the strain? This is the strain, and this is the uh, from here and, and there. So Z is the location of this ply. So this is the how we calculate uh, ply strain. Uh, but even in each ply, okay, each ply, this has the certain thickness. Certain thickness, even ply has a certain thickness for sure. So let's say we we uh, natural uh, coordinate uh, uh, this one x and y, and and this is a z. So this is a z, and that is a z. So through the thickness, we have a two z coordinate. One is a we call z k. The other one is a z k plus one. And inside, we can just say is a, 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 a linearly varying. Uh, so even in one ply, we have a top and bottom ply. Okay, strictly speaking, we don't know. Uh, I mean, each ply will have a different a strain, and which will vary through the thickness. So at the top and bottom, and we have to say this is the A Z K. And ZK plus one, so this is a ZK, I mean Epsilon K at, at the K and ZK. And also Epsilon K plus one, we call Epsilon zero plus Z, K plus one and K. Okay, uh, again, this is the uh, same one. So this is the OBEX strain. Now, what is the next step? We got the OB axis strain. What is the OB axis strain? Uh, OB axis strain is, is again is this one. This is the a thickness attractions. Okay, this is a uh, uh, Z. Okay, this is a Z, and we got this all OB axis strain. Now, how do we get the O? Ovex is stress. Ovex stress. Uh, in other words, let's say we have a, a strain, just a strain, uh, like that. This is a strain, and now how how much the stress? This is a sigma. We, we, I will just call a bar, emphasizing this is the OV axis. OV axis means that element axis, okay? Element axis. Now, when you play with final element, pay very much special attention to a coordinate system. So imagine that there is a lot of a coordinate, even in this pipe, there is a global, 
this is say X and Y and Z. Say this is a global coordinate, right? And each element, okay, each element, element has its own another coordinate. This is called element coordinate. Now, each one also has what? Uh, I'm sorry, before that, before that, we, we, uh, we, in some time, we need, we want to introduce a local coordinate to better, uh, better uh, model the geometry. Say this one, global coordinate is, is something like that, okay? X, Y, and Z, okay, I, or I, I will call X and Y and Z. This is the, all the coordinate, global coordinate. And now we need a X, Y, Z to model certain local geometry. Geometry like that, geometry like that, then we better use this coordinate and that coordinate. So this is the, a, another local coordinate. Now another coordinate is the, to describe the element coordinate, X and Y, Z, and which is along some uh, element. Element sometimes is not the rectangular, sometimes li like that. So there is a certain way to do that, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, and we always follow one, two as X and this and, and vertical. So this is element coordinate. Now element coordinate, and now we have another last one is the ply on axis coordinate. So uh, my, I like to emphasize the, the different coordinate. In isotropic material, we don't have to worry much about the all different coordinates because the material properties are given with respect to a, or just one global. That's all you need to do. All Young's modulus has nothing to do with the direction. So we don't need to worry. So only one. But in composite, the layout sequence is with respect to uh, these structures and this ob axis and on axis and global. So we have a global, local, and uh, uh, ob axis and on axis. So N is the four element coordinate. Uh, I don't want to go in too much in detail, but uh, please be careful about the coordinate system. Anyhow, uh, here, here, if this is the element or laminate, and this is the a coordinate for for uh, we call ob axis, right? Ob axis. So we 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 get the sigma bar from from previous definition. Okay, this is the what? Ob axis. And then how how do we get the ob axis stress? How do we do that? Well, we do already have this q bar which was already transformed from Q matrix, right? So we do have a Q bar and all you need to do is just multiply Q bar and then we got this Q, I mean sigma bar in the O axis. But O axis has a certain ply angle. We do not know how much the strength or stress we do need to know a ply on axis. This is the on axis and all the material properties with respect to this coordinate system. So we need to transform this sigma bar to sigma. This is a sigma. So we need to do a, is a transform the stress from ob axis to uh, on axis, okay? Uh, so this is the a, a theory and, and step we need to follow from laminate strain and curvature and then ob-axis strain and then ob-axis stress 
and then own axis stresses. Okay, uh, please follow uh, these steps. Uh, once you follow the step, uh, detailed equations, always you can uh, refer to reference or refer to uh, equation table. That's not a big deal, but uh, conceptually, you need to, I mean, you should be able to uh, follow the step. That's very important. And this is the, the most critical issue uh, uh, for you uh, as a, a structural designer of the composite materials. How do we get the ABD? How do we get the ply strain on axis or well, ply stresses? Now, once you get the old ply, this is what? Ply on axis stress. <coughs> then, well, which we're gonna define, okay? We didn't define yet, but we're gonna do is that we have all kinds of strengths. We don't know yet, but don't worry, we will study that. All kinds of stress. It is like when you have a stresses in isotropic material, what is what do you need to do? Well, you have a yield strength, and then you get what? Bond masses, you calculate the bond masses stresses, right? Bond masses, and you compare this, and it's a small or large or equal, that's how we design. If we want to introduce some safety factors, uh, then this is a, a 10 and this should be 20. So that's the way we introduce a safety factor. The concept is very similar, but difficulty comes from, we have uh, five different strengths not just one that makes big difference so rather than bomb misses theory we do need a certain types of a failure theory what is that there is there is some harshin zayu or even my uh, failure criterion is called micromechanics of failure mmf well you can develop your own who cares? So there are a, they can be tens of different failure criteria available out there, depending on the applications and depending on the accuracy you, you like to do. And sometimes you like to have a certain certificate. Let's say you develop wind turbine blade. Let's say you develop a certain uh, pressure vessel. You can have a, your own design procedures but you better follow a certification process like a German Lloyd, GL, or DMV. They always have a list of a step and especially, oh, you have to use this failure criteria. You better follow that procedures. Otherwise, you know, there are so many different designers, they cannot compare it. And insurance company especially, really hard time. So insurance company always rely on GL certificate, for example, and then uh, this product is uh, certified, then insurance pay money, and then they can, be, they can sell their product. So anyhow, there is a certain procedures, but this kind of design procedures is uh, so important, in, in especially the commercial side. And, and for the defense system, uh, rather than certificate, let's say, uh, Boeing or some you know uh, big uh, company, they have a they they own spec. It's called military spec. Some, for example, so we we have to follow certain military spec. That you they provide which failure criterion, which safety factors you have to consider. So understanding this failure design step is is very critical. Uh, well, there is a one small chapter, it's called stress distribution in a sandwich laminate, but this is not much, uh, using your tools is very easy. I mean, this is very common, very important structures. Say we have a, a core, <coughs> core materials, and what is the purpose of a core? Why do we call core? Why do we need a core inside the structures? 
Well, imagine you have a, a H beam or this kind of I type beam. Why do we have, this is a structure which is subject to support something like bending like that, right? So why do we need a, this kind of a I beam or a H beam? Well, this is the a bending rigidity this way, bending rigidity is this way. So top and bottom surface will carry most of the load. That's the most effective way to increase bending stiffness. Increase bending stiffness means that if you have a certain load, this one will support a lot of load without much deformations. Exactly the same concept of this a composite. Say we have a, a laminate. We have a certain load like that. And if we just you know, stack this laminate like that, bending stiffness this way is very low, very low. So the way, the most effective way is just half of them. This is the half and the other half. And then let's, let's put what? Core inside, okay? So compare, compare the weight between those two structures, this one and that. Weight is almost the same, why? Core, this is the core, is just like, uh, the density is like a 0.05 or 0 0.1, very light. Is, is nothing. So weight is almost the same, but bending stiffness wise, similar to this, is, um, uh, you know, always the bending stiffness is the uh, H third power. So A, you increase H, then bending stiffness increase a lot. So this is the most effective way of increasing. So most of a structure, aerospace, and, and uh, some uh, structure which support a lot of load has the core in there. So the role of core is very critical. So using your tool, how do we consider core? Very easy, you just consider this one, two, ply number, four, and five. Just consider core as a one over ply and has its own material property and own density and so on and six, seven, and nine. So all you need to do is inside your Excel and column, you just choose a core and a certain thickness of this guy. Then this, your program will automatically calculate bending stiffness. By the way, I like to emphasize that N and M and Epsilon and K Oh, ABD is quite new, and now you understand. But ABD is not much new theory compared to isotropic. Compared to isotropic, you already know M is what? M equal K, and there is the EI. I hope everybody understands what I am. EI. Young's modulus, I is what? <clears throat> Moment of inertia, right? And I hope you also know that F we call uh, a E A some extensions. This is the A2 equation which describe isotropic plate. This one is nothing but this guy. This one is nothing but this guy. See, moment equal D curvature and force is a epsilon so for the isotropic material b always disappear so this one of course covers not only composite but also isotropic plate and for that case this will automatically disappear this will be a e a and b will be uh, EI, uh, moment of inertia, okay? So uh, I didn't 
gold, I mean, start from here, uh, not to confuse you, but now you, you can see the relations and, and you will see if you increase, you add coincide, uh, you will see how this D increase, meaning how you increase the uh, moment of inertia. Okay, that's what I like to emphasize here. Uh, but again, here is a summary. Uh, we like to, it's the same uh, slide as before. We like to go to, uh, first start from here. This is a given, and this is the um, input. And this is the output, right? This is the calculation. And here, and this, all, X, uh, all axis. Here and, and this, uh, all the axis stress. And here you got finally own axis stress. What is the next step? Failure analysis. Compare with the strengths, you like to calculate safety factors. Okay, safety factors. That is the last step, but I will postpone that is the, uh, uh, next chapters but let's let's program this step in excel okay up to here how do we do that well theory wise not that much difficult but uh program wise how how do we do that oh, okay let's have a 10 minute break okay Okay, um, uh, we came back to Excel. Uh, let's see what, how we program, uh, what we have learned, uh, starting from implant strain curvature to apply stress. Uh, before that, I just added one function, uh, is that uh, how to calculate weight, mass of this laminate. Uh, it's very trivial, very easy, but uh, very important characteristics of the laminate because the purpose of a laminate is mainly the uh, light weight. So um, what you need to do is that this is a material database and you have a, a full stiffness for each material and let's say we are adding one more a material property like a density, okay? Uh, I just added here uh, because I'm gonna add here uh, the, the uh, still a strength related property. Uh, I reserve this one for strength. strength. But here is a density. A density is a, is a specific density, means that 1.8 is 1.8 times uh, heavier than water. So this is a, a specific density. And in the main, uh, I add one more row here, so density. So whatever you material you chose, you chose the five, and then uh, you call a material number five and 11 uh, items, uh, which is from this, uh, I will just say, this is a one. Two. Okay, that is the 11th column. And here uh, you have the 11th and uh, certainly you got the density for each this much here. Uh, just copy and paste and, and copy and paste and you get this. And here, I uh, just want to remind you that this is the a four, four ply, one, two, three, four ply. Uh, I'll change this one as one. And this one is one. So all teeth, 300 <coughs> carbon and 300 carbon here and thickness the bottom is a zero so we are we having only nine plies but at the center we chose number four what is the number four a core material and core uh, and 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 thickness is, is arbitrary right now uh, and density uh, here you got the density of the core according to this material number and now 
how do we calculate weight? Well, weight is a simply total mass is a simply a density times the thickness times, uh, for example, if you have this uh, this length and that length, you say uh, we will call Lx and Ly and and height, right? And we sum them up. We all sum uh, I and A uh, for each ply. Okay, this is a, it would be a total mass of the laminate. But what we have concern is the with respect to a a, a unit area. Unit area means divide by Lx and Ly. Okay, Lx and Ly. So this is the a uh, how we calculate a thickness of each ply and multiply the density and sum them up. And this is very important figures is called gram per square meter. It's called very common word GSM. Gram per square meter. Well, uh, the unit from kilo to gram, we can easily convert, but important is gram per square meters. Well, first you need to calculate the kilogram per square meters, and then you can uh, convert that. Okay, so, um, Uh, so here, as you can see, what I did is that we uh, multiply rho and h. How do we do that? We just simply a vector dot, which is the same as the uh, density times h. So this time is plus this multiply this plus this multiply this. So these two vector we dot. Okay, how to do that? We got a, a transpose thickness vector and then dot. Uh, simply that's the way we do that. And this one uh, rather than this we can call a density. And then to convert from this is the old meters. And, and specific density. So we just multiply a 1,000 to change it to a kilo, and then a, a kilo to kilo to gram. We just multiply another 1,000. So this will be a four point. What is that? Gram 14,000 gram. So 14 kilogram per square meters. Is that right? A little heavy. So one meter by one meter. How come so heavy? Thickness is one millimeters. So total thickness is the about nine millimeters. Ah, it's a little bit heavy. 14. It's really heavy. Why? Well, uh, Well, it should be okay. Uh, okay, so what we like to do is that, <clears throat> let's say we like to change thickness of a core. Say this one, this is a thickness of a core and, and changing using these input parameters. Let's say we, we like to change it, change it, change it. And what you like to do, 
we like to calculate how much mass we increase and how much bending stiffness we got. So bending stiffness, <coughs> for example, we can say, uh, where, where is the bending stiffness, by the way? Bending stiffness is from this guy, ABD matrix. Okay, this is the ABD, and especially this is the A, uh, D, D matrix. This is the uh, bending stiffness matrix. Now, this is a very uh, tricky and important point. Uh, say you, you we like to. I better use. I better use a uh, this is uh, here to calculate. I don't have a slide for this, but let's say we have a epsilon zero curvature and A, B, D, and and um, oops, N and M and epsilon zero and curvature. We like to do last time. We went through how to calculate the equivalent stiffness, right? Young's modulus. And now we like to know how much the bending, uh, bending stiffness of this plate compared. We often compare with isotropic aluminum. There's always the index uh, company will ask you. So how, how light, how, how much you light? So this is the way uh, we need to know. Now equivalent, how we need to understand the young smooth definition of a young smooth. Young modulus, we have to keep that in mind. This is the A definitions of a young modulus. And now what's the definition of this guy? And this is the uh, definitions of the um, curvatures and EI and, and moment. Okay, that, that is the uh, definitions, and, and, and why? Because we need to know epsilon one, and x, and y, and s, and th this is the, always the uh, one over e minus, this is the, how we define the um, Young's modulus, right? Why we define rather than this, okay? This is a wrong start. If you start from here, this you will easily make a mistake like this way. Y and this and this one is the uh, uh, all the uh, Young's modulus. E cannot go comes here. You have to divide by certain numbers and this and that is the starting one. You have to invert and you got this one. So why? The reason is that when we measure the Young's modulus, we always apply what? Stress. And here, stress is a zero. Let them contract. So we apply the stress here is a, a contract. So stress is a certain value. The, this is the a zero value. This is a zero, this is a zero, and that's why we got these equations. If we use it, this one and epsilon zero and that, uh, this is the a wrong, wrong a uh, uh, conclusions. Okay, looks very similar but totally different, uh, as much as a, a Parsons effect difference. So always in material definition, you need to st start with a um, a a strain definitions. Okay. Why? Because you always apply the stress and others will be zero. And bending moment is the same. Uh, bending moment is the same. So to do this one, what you do is that we got this B matrix, okay? Uh, we need to invert this epsilon zero and curvature. We invert that, we invert this ABD. A, B, D, invert, and, and uh, N and M, 
and then you got the one component and then inverse. So I will call, okay, I will call inverse of this is called A matrix, small a, small d, small b matrix. This is the inverse of this, okay? And then uh, E is simply this one. So E, X will be one of A, one, one. And this one compared to that, and equivalent E, I will be one of D, one, one. Okay, so step is that you invert this one, you got that. And then each term you you reverse, reverse. That is the a uh, equivalent Young's modulus of the uh, an equivalent to to isotropic Young's modulus. So I will like to add that one here. Uh, that's why we got this a uh, e one right e one. Uh, when we invert, we often neglect B matrix, okay? Uh, we may neglect a B matrix here uh, because that cannot be compared to isotropic material. So we, when we invert, we only invert A, only invert D. A little bit confusing, huh? but uh, from, so uh, where, where is the, the, this guy? This the, this guy, oops, this this guy is, is comes from here. Uh, so I will like to here, and then I'll just. So here, as you can see, inverse of this, and I will do the uh, similar job here. We got this and inverse of what? inverse of D matrix, this is a D, uh, no, this is the A D matrix. Okay, this is the A D matrix, inverse of a D matrix. And now we like to have equivalent E I one bending stiffness, and, and this one is the inverse of that first term, and divide by thickness. Uh, uh, is the thickness uh, Uh, I cannot remember, is a divide by H or, the reason we divide by H is that, okay, the, the reason we divide by H is that, uh, we, here, here, the by definitions, the material property needs to be stress. Is a, here is the a strain, uh, in plane strain. In plane strain is the, always the integration of sigma and dz. So we have to divide this and moment, uh, and this moment, uh, I'm sorry, this moment, this is the, uh, uh, what's the definition of a moment? Uh, this moment, uh, this is a sigma and Z, T, A, right? This is the, uh, this definition. But our definition is a little different. This is a sigma Z DH. Okay, there is a, a, a little difference. This is the, a. our definition of M is the, uh, through the thickness. So what do we need to do? Uh, Uh, we need to
So what do we did we do was that he uh, that was the uh, I'm sorry it's a little bit messy but this is the um, conventional definition n right so we divide by h and we divide by I'm sorry. So sigma equivalent is defined by uh, a in plane load divided by h. That's the um, okay. This one and moment. Uh, moment. Uh, our definition of moment will needs to be. Uh, Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, my intuition is that this is also uh, divided by the uh, H, okay? Divided by H, so this one has to be divided by the uh, H here, and, and P, this term is the inverse of that one, uh, explain the reason, and, and this one is the uh, bending stiffness, okay? When this is equivalent bending stiffness. Of course, you can get a equivalent bending stiffness in, in two directions. Uh, then this will be a, uh, not this guy, it has to be these terms. And, and you can define very similar to this step. So, like to do here is that we, uh, we like to trace a bending stiffness E1, EI1 terms. And, and also we like to compare the uh, mass. Mass, uh, mass is, is uh, a, 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 this one. So this one, uh, not this one, this will be this. Okay, let, let's give a name for that. And EI will be this guy. And, and what we like to do is that let's try to change this one, okay? Change it from a point zero zero 001, and you will see this, what is that? Okay, this one uh, is a core. Uh, we don't need to specify any angle for the core. We just uh, enter. Uh, a thickness. So thickness uh, is this one. So uh, say plot core honeycomb uh, and and kick chart and starting from point zero zero well very small. So it has no core initial will be a uh, 10 times of others other uh, plants and and step uh, like point point zero zero one <coughs> change it yes okay yes this is the result the reason uh, we got is the two 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 big uh, relations. Well, look at the mass. Mass is the <coughs> um, maximum and minimum. Minimum and maximum. Okay. Oops. Okay, so if you look at the EY1 bending stiffness, oh, how come it's decreasing? 
Okay. Uh, let's take a look at it. Why is decreasing? M inverse, inverse of M matrix. Oh, sorry. So this guy has an inverse of uh, not D matrix, has to be. Uh, <laughs> This is the ABD matrix. This is the, uh, oh, this is the inverse, sorry. So this is actually inverse. So this guy has to be inverse of what? Inverse of uh, this upper one is the ABD matrix. Inverse of this D matrix, and then we got the uh, inverse of each items. Okay, sorry, that was my mistake. And, and, and let's do it again. Uh, how come? Inverse of ABD. This is ABD matrix, is it? Huh? Yeah, this is an AD matrix. <clears throat> and we inverse that and we inverse again. Probably this D in D is this one. And that is the third power. What's wrong? Huh? Any? Very interesting. Uh, what is wrong? This guy uh, goes to only uh, thickness. Okay, thickness changing, right? And then uh, this guy, that, that, and okay. Uh, hmm, good point of the debugging. Okay, let's say, uh, how do we debug this? Well, I'm sure you always, you need to go through this debugging process and debugging is a, a, a beauty of uh, programming. So you need to have a, there are a lot of books how to debug a, a programming. But my skill is always to make situation simple. So let's say how to make this uh, case is uh, simple. Let's take a look at the aluminum. Aluminum is much easier. Uh, so I would choose all, always the um, uh, a isotropy uh, like that. And let's uh, core, core, core. Okay, let's have a core there. Um, but core, core uh, stiffness is very low, aluminum. Okay, now let's take a look at this each, uh, try to debug, okay? Every one has the same thickness. So if you really look at the D matrix, oops. Yeah, D matrix is certainly different. A matrix is all same because it doesn't matter where it is located, but D matrix made uh, different because the top and middle 
the uh, there will be different. Uh, so hmm. Okay. This guy is something wrong, right? Uh, look at this. They always uh, this one. How come does not change? And this guy. And this one is the. <coughs> this is what. This is a core, right? Core is okay, but this guy, A, B, D, has to change, but didn't change. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, we forgot to. When we program this one, we enter, but I forgot to enter a uh, change this one. So uh, let's copy and, and uh, here, okay, I didn't do that. So again, the, uh, when we program, we always have a, a bug. And then how to find the bug is the one tip is that to make case simple, simpler and how to make a simple in composite case. Even in, in, in Abacus and so on, you always come up with a certain unexpected error, then just change it to an isotropic material, redefine material properties, and then you will see uh, and, and compare your, as a, your expectations. Okay, uh, I'm almost sure now will be okay. Okay, before that, let's get back to, uh, this is the, Isotropic. Now let's get back to a composite one 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 and and um, okay. So core uh, four and, and do that and they, again. Now we got this all um, uh, change as expected. Look at the mass. Well. Uh, actually, the mass of the core has a little bit, uh, uh, I'm a contribute to a total mass, but as you can see, very much small, very small. But if you look at this bending stiffness wise, you starting from a zero, uh, zero, I mean, no core, and, and you look at how it increase, very effective, very effectively increase, okay? Uh, I thought it, this has to be a uh, scare. Ah, something's not right. Because this one is order of the uh, third power and, and sum, and we divide by the uh, H here. So it has to be, oh, we divide by total thickness. Okay, well, I, I will, sorry, I will double check, but this is, uh, I am 90% uh, sure this is uh, correct, but I, I will uh, certainly double check, okay? But this is the how we, uh, I mean, effectively increase the bending stiffness using the core. The core, uh, cost-wise, is a, almost very uh, cheaper than composite, very lighter than composite. Uh, but as you can see, this is a very effective way increasing uh, bending stiffness. Now, what we like to do as the main main part is this. Um, Procedures, okay. Uh, procedure <laughs> is this, um, this and that and that, okay. How do we go through uh, these procedures? Now, this one we call epsilon one k is this guy. One uh, k, k means at the bottom. I we call zk is the bottom top 
bottom top, bottom top. Okay, so we starting from uh, this. Okay, we starting from this, and, and and let's get rid of the core as a zero, and we can see we have a uh, eight ply, and total eight millimeters, and and bottom is the uh, four millimeter and and three millimeter and so on. So zk is the bottom of the ply. So this epsilon one at k bottom and epsilon two and epsilon six. Now this one, as I mentioned, is this one, okay? And then we need to have this epsilon zero and curvature. Where is it? Okay, here are they. Here, uh, here is the, um, we didn't have a name yet. Uh, we, we, let's call it, this one is the um, epsilon zero, a uh, in plane. And this one, let's call a K uh, curvature. Oh, it's very inconvenient. Okay, so, uh, uh, oops. So this is a key and, and curvature. Okay, okay. And now how do we get this one? Well, following this equation, epsilon one is the index, uh, epsilon zero and in plane, first term, comma one, and then uh, this is epsilon zero plus zk. Remember the z, the coordinate system is we call k, right? Times a index. You, you know what is index? We have a three terms. We need to call one of them. Index a k, uh, k uh, curvatures and comma one. Okay, so this one and and copy. And the second one will be uh, like this guy will be two, simply a second uh, strain, and this will be two. And this one, uh, where we call shear, we call it six, but in terms of index, this will be a uh, three, okay? So this is the A strain at the bottom of the ply, and now, we, we just copy and paste up to here. And you can see how this guy change. Okay, this one, uh, you can see this is how we change. Uh, as a confirming, uh, we can plot this one, uh, compare, uh, use this one as the uh, Z, and let's try to plot. And as you can see that, uh, this is epsilon 1k, and along this, um, this is a z, okay? This is a z, and you can see the strain is a pretty much uh, linear. Oh. At the, the bar, second, zero, and bottom is a compression, and top is the um, tension, right? This is the a, a we bend it like that. Okay, uh, similarly, we get this one and that. Uh, let's plot them all. Let's plot them all. Uh, how do we plot them all? Well, we, along this, uh, along this Z, okay, along this Z, and we plot, uh, select them all. I push the, the control key here. And, and plot them. Now, this is a very important observations. We bend like that. So, uh, we, we bend like that, okay? We bend like that. So, this is the, along this one is the, one direction. So as you can see, at the top, one direction is this guy and this much tensile strain. At the bottom, you have a what? Compression. 
right? Compression, we have a dismatch compression. But what is the other one? When we, when we have this one, I cannot demonstrate it here, but when we have this one, this guy will have an anti curvature like that. So this structure will like that, but this one has an anti structure, anti curvature. That's the most common behavior of the plate. This doesn't have any bending, but uh, I, I probably uh, uh, told you about this. I will. Uh, I will draw. Okay, this is the AAA plate. Okay, this is the A plate, and we apply the moment here, and and the bending behavior will be. A, certainly this one is the curved like that, but the other side we have curved like that. Uh, doesn't look good. Okay, so if this one is a certainly positive, and then bottom one. Bottom one it is certainly uh, a, a, a compressions, okay? But this way, this way, take a look at this one. This one is the compressions. Bottom is the tensions. That's why this is called, uh, so this one, uh, bending, and this one is the, we call it K1 curvature, and this one, is called anti curvatures k2 in the case of isotropic always isotropic poisson ratio of these structures and and very interesting very important behavior so at the top we can see this way is the a compressions So that's why, that's why in here we have, we have, <coughs> at the top, is it here? Is a tension? This value, value is a certain value. At the top, look at that. I, I, I'm sorry. This is a top. Okay. This is a top coordinate, and this much is this strain. At the bottom, bottom, you can see that. Oh, sorry, at the top you have this much compressive strain. Okay, this is a compressive strain in here. So this is a top plate, top of the laminate, and this is the a bottom. And as you can see here, this is the a compressions, and that is the a tensions. So compared to this and that, this is the uh, usually larger and, and contract. So this is anti curvature we can double check. Okay, uh, so very important. Now, this one, as I mentioned, this is a, a each ply, we have a bottom. Now we like to have same one, but a, a uh, top, top of the each ply, top of the each ply, let's call K1. And just copy. And what do you need to change here? Mm. 
we all we need to change is a zk1 zk1 right zk1 this is the a, uh, a zk and this is a zk it's a top line and the top surface of a uh, a ply so this is a zk1 and zk1 Okay, as you can see, the value are a little different. Values are a little different. Oh, sorry, not good. Okay, so this one is the what this, this is the OBX strain. What what is the next one? Well, next one uh, is to calculate OBX stress. OBX stress. How do we do that? Uh, Okay, we first a change uh, from E to sigma. So we like to calculate sigma one at K, sigma two and K. And, and for that purpose, uh, what we need to do? We need to multiply this Q. We already have all the Q matrix. And, and, and that is the uh, step of this, okay? This is the, uh, this step and, and now it's uh, here. And this one, uh, we calculate uh, Q11 times E1K. Uh, we didn't define this uh, value yet. Okay, so Q1 times a E1 uh, K and then uh, plus E2 and Epsilon 2 and 6 and Epsilon Q and 6. Okay, that is the um, from the definition of uh, O axis, this is the one and, and Epsilon 2. Uh, this one we have what? Uh, do, do, do. This one we call Q12 epsilon and two, Q2 and Q26. And next one we uh, have 1, 6 and 2, 6 and Q6. Okay, so this is the one. So th this uh, just copy and paste, and, and that's what we got. And now we have this same, but instead of a K, we have a K1, right? So instead of a, a, a K, we just a, a ch change it to a K1. Okay, so uh, double check, we have all the K1, right? Same Q, same Q, because this is the same ply, and we multiply, uh, uh, copy and here. Okay, so we got ply stress, and let's try to plot this a ply all of axis stress along the sigma one, I will just uh, select one, this, and, and plot. Uh, I wrong. Okay, I need to select this one. 
ZK, okay, coordinate K, all oops. ZK along ZK and this, and then plot. Okay, this one and compare to this guy. I'll copy that one and and compare. Why is B16? Up. Sorry, this is the has to be stress. Huh? This one has to be this guy, has to be this guy. So, sigma one, oh la la. Oh, oh, moment one. Yeah, we applied the moment one, by the way. And zero. Why stress is not. Okay, let, 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 let me. Uh, This is sigma one. Uh, ah, it's not easy to stand in. Okay, uh, let me see. This one is chain is a, a, a correct, and now it's a stress. Uh, I mean, stress is not so correct. Why? Uh, this guy. And why they are going and go like that? Well, let's do it again. We're using the we choose the isotropic materials. A, a number three. Uh, choose isotropic. Okay, and then see. See what's going on in isotropic. Uh, not only strain, but also stress has to linear, right? And but for the composite, uh, it may have a different stress because it has a different angle. So uh, not so. Okay, uh, looks correct. And you can see that the stress-wise, this is the a uh, bottom stress, 
and this is a we have a a many price many we have a many price Man. We have a uh, many plies. Okay, I, I will call many plies like that. This is the first ply. This is a second ply. This is called K. K. This is a K of the first. This is a K one of the first ply, and this is also K and K one, and this is a K and K one, and so on. So um, first, a bottom top. This is the a bottom top. So K is the bottom and top and bottom. So as you can see, this guy is the same because it's the same locations and same material. So this is all isotropic. And you can see this is the same stress at the same location, by the way, this is the same location. But if this is a different material, if this is a different material, then this will be different. Even though the reason is that strain is a linear, but the stiffness is a different, that this, this stress and that stress will be different, but this is all isotropic. They, you can see they are all uh, same value. This is the, we can check and, and see, and that, and that is all, always the same so I, i'm sure this will be the uh, uh correct okay so this is the a stress uh stress for 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 isotropic i mean the ovx is a stress now what is the next step what is the next one Next one is the calculate own axis stress. We a translate, I mean transform, transform to 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 uh, transform to a Oh, why is that? Now, what next step is to copy this, uh, come here, we like to convert or transform all the axis to, to own axis. And this is a T. What is a T? Uh, do we have a T? Yes, we do. We have a, a transformation of the stress, which we already defined here. This is the, say we have a all axis stress here, okay, all axis to our own axis. And this is the, uh, uh, this is the, the other way, reverse, own axis to all axis. But now what we like to do is the own axis to all axis to uh, the other way. So we, we this is the a uh, plus, So this is the a plus minus going this way, that way, that way, this way. All you need to do is change the angle sign. 
minus plus to minus minus to plus. So it just copy and back to here and, and paste. And, and so we, if we, we like to calculate sigma x and sigma y and sigma 6, I'm uh, sorry, sigma s, we call sigma s. And we like to, okay, we define this guy as the uh, O of axis and following this equation, what is the, what was the M? We define M as a cosine. So this one, we got, we get this cos square times, times what? Sigma one. So sigma one and K. And, and, And then this one, n is the sign, and sigma 2. <clears throat> and 2i sign times this and sigma 6. Okay? We just follow this theory and in the first row, sigma x is a, a cosine scale and sigma one and sine square and twice the sine and cosine and sigma six. Okay, so as you can see, this one is simply like that. Why they are same? Why are they same? Right now is all isotropic. So isotropic, of axis, on axis, they are same. So here I like to emphasize when you develop even in CA tools, Abacus and ANSYS, if you come up with a certain problem, always change it to isotropic and see uh, what is going on. And, and it really help us to, to find the bug. A bug we cannot avoid, okay? So you have to bug, debug, a bug is, is a natural process. Uh, you don't need to be disappointed, you don't need to be uh, you don't have to have a difficult time. They have a, a process to find the bug and, and debug. So debugging process is really a art, it really an uh, engineered skill, it's very important. So anyhow, in debugging process in composite, it is to, to simplify, how to simplify, we change to isotropic, we change the number of ply into one, and, and so that is pretty much like isotropic. Okay, uh, second one, we cosine, uh, cosine. Oh, uh, n is what? This is a sine. And, and m is the uh, cosine. And here we need a minus. Okay, see, this is the same zero. Now, the last one will be minus sine and cosine and sigma one uh, cosine times the sine. Uh, sigma two, okay. And then um, plus a m is what? m is a cosine minus the sine and, and sigma six. Okay, so that uh, I'm sure you have the same one. And then uh, uh, top ply, okay, top ply. And here, what do you need to do? Uh, instead of K, we just uh, enter the K1. Okay, so uh, let's just copy and, and, and paste here. And this is the oldest stress. Uh, let's see. 
Yes, there is a, a, a uh, wrong value. It's a different value. Uh, why is that? Uh, okay, this one has have to be same as that one, uh, but not why not same? Okay, this is a forty five. Oh. Okay, well, I made a mistake. A mistake means not the programming, but I, um, this is the a transformation of stress. It's nothing to do with the material properties. So we transform this stress to by angle zero. We transform this stress by 45. This is the, this is a stress state and this is the stress state. Let's take a look at this, only that part, okay? Only that part and only that part. This is the, a, trans, a stress of transformation. And as you can see here, uh, this one, how much we transform? This is a zero degree, 45 degree, and minus 45 degree, and so on. So we transform a 45 degree. So this one, we have a stress is on axis. I mean, the, uh, like that, okay? <laughs> this is almost a zero. Now we change this one in 45, and now what do we get? We get this and that, and that and this much. And then also even shear has the same value. I'm sorry, this one is not the positive. This is the A negative, right? So let's double check. This is the, again, nothing to do with the material property. This is just a simply stress transformation. I like to remind you of this Mo circle. Mo circle of this stress state is a, a, a here, I'm sorry, minus here, right? Minus certain value, and here is a zero, and no shear, so that's why here. So we make a Mo circle, I'm sorry, somebody may not know the Mo circle, but here, and then we, we rotate to 45, and now we are here. 45, we rotate this much, and 90 degree, which is a two eyes of 45, now here, this guy is the same, I mean the same as a half of this. How much is this? We have a, uh, where is it? A uh, 70,000, what is a half? 35,000. So as you can see here, compression, com this is a compression and compression, this is the same compression, compression, shear, even shear is this much, right? This is the, compression and this is a shear and shear as a compression they are all same as the half of this guy so this is a stress of transformation we can easily double check double check of our theory okay so we are pretty much sure about the our programming so far okay uh, so, a, uh,
this is the what we have uh, up to here. Uh, no, sorry, this is the temperature, thermal stress. And here is the up to this much. Okay, we have all a own axis stress. own axis stress. Uh, Any questions so far? Okay, uh, there may be some steps which is unclear to you. Okay, I, I, I uh, surely understand that, but the point is that the overall uh, steps we, we have to follow, okay, that uh, needs to be uh, clear. Uh, now what we like to do is that uh, plot the values, plot this result, plot. Uh, we just plot, but I like to have a special plot. A special plot means that, <clears throat> let's say, we always need to plan for, for output. What kind of output we like to present to, to as a report or uh, to somebody uh, or for ourselves. Uh, you know, all the procedure could be complicated, but one thing we have to make sure is that output is, should be very simple, should be very understandable to anybody. So we need to have this whole procedure as a black box. Nobody wants to open it, but input and output just make it as simple as possible. That is the one we need to, one we need to do. We engineer, uh, we certainly spend time and developing, understand tools, but uh, to be a good engineer, we know, we should know how to make a simple uh, uh, presentations. For that purpose, uh, the output, what is the easy way or uh, quite understandable output? I would propose, okay, out, as output, Okay, we have uh, all the stresses. We have uh, all ply, 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 and always the coordinate goes this way, right? Coordinate goes middle and go top and bottom. Now, we certainly want to have a plot and, and this vertical axis, I like to have uh, a what? Z coordinate. <clears throat> and whatever strain and stress we have, it will become this way, sigma x and sigma y and, and sigma s, even epsilon x and, and so on. So if we have a, a, a certain value, always this represent a ply, and we sometimes goes like that, some, you know, this is the, what we like to develop, a, a output format. And sometimes a strain, as we saw, we could be linear or something. And this is the, what we like to do as a, a output. Forget about the, all the procedures, uh, but we specify the um, ply number, materials, and angle, and, and given, and then we apply what? N and M, and this will be the output. Okay, this is the, our goal. Uh, we are trying to add this module. Just, uh, you know, Excel functions. How do we do that? Uh, a, this is Z, by the way. Uh, I try to uh, remind you that uh, this one. This one is called a ZK1, ZK, and ZK1. 
and we have a two value. Okay, this is a uh, ZK and ZK1. We have a certain value variations. And also this one, we have a, a, a uh, I would like, I would like right here, a ZK and a ZK1 uh, uh, and, and ZK and, and ZK1 uh, and, and ZK and, and so on. So strain wise, imagine in, uh, when we bend or whatever apply, the strain has to be continuous. But stress, here is the, for example, aluminum and steel, even though the strain is continuous, stress may have this and that is discontinuous, depending on the angle. Uh, just one second, please. By the way, this guy is Dr. Santos, who will give us a one hour seminar next week. He's busy on getting uh, a visa process. <laughs> they need uh, my uh, passport. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is the a output I like to, uh, we like to develop, okay? And, and keep that in mind, is very, the output looks very clear. Oh, the strain is straight. Oh, but stress is a zigzag. Now we, we will understand why. So make it output as simple will help us a lot. But one thing is that we have a, a two different, a two, uh, coordinate a ZK, ZK1 and, and so on. So that, that is the one uh, bothers us a little bit. And here is a ZK and a ZK1 and so on. Uh, how do we do that? Uh, uh, it's been a long time to do this, but okay. Uh, more specifically, what we like to do is that at the bottom, uh, this is the first ply. First ply, we like to do ZK and ZK1. This is a second ply, second ply. This will be ZK and ZK1. This is the a third ply and so on. So ZK will be like that, and ZK plus one will be like that. So basically this is the same coordinate, because this is the top coordinate of a bottom ply, and this is the bottom ply of the top, uh, second ply. So this value will be the same, but as a, you will see, the value of the stress will be different from this guy. So, um, so, we're gonna rearrange the coordinate system like that. Okay, we, we plan this way as an output, and now we like to rearrange it. Uh, how, how is the, how? Okay, I hope you understand the purpose, okay? We like to have uh, this guy, first ply, second ply, and third ply, and so on. So simply, we can call index 
zk zk oops, zk comma one this is the a uh, 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 the bottom right and this guy is what zk and and second right and this guy will be a, a zk uh, three now in between we, we like to have a zk one first ply and and uh, this one zk one and two and so on so i like to um, a uh, optimize uh say this is a one one two two and so on so now we as a programming way this one can be come from this and this guy can comes from uh here so and then this one is simply this guy plus one and this is plus one so now all you need to do is that just copy and paste so this one is automatically referred to a second and, and so on right so we we uh so first we we have uh, as many ply as we we like uh how many plies we have 10 right yes 10 uh let's come to so the uh, nine and ten, and then we just copy, and then uh, paste up to uh, uh, ten. Now I will show you uh, what it means. This means a ply number, and this is the z coordinate number, uh, z coordinate. Um, so if we plot them, uh, well, it's uh, nothing, uh, not much specials, but just. Uh, show you and this one see this is a first ply and bottom top second ply bottom top and, and, and step 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 so this is the what we had and this is the uh, I'm gonna uh, I just cut and paste here Okay, I just okay, so uh, sometimes it shows Excel. Do you see this Excel small, small, this guy, this guy? The reason is that uh, this is not quite regular because it is a ZK, ZK1, ZK. So Excel automatically give us the uh, error, uh, but uh, we don't, uh, this can be a neglect. Okay. So. Okay. So this is the a ply number and z, z coordinate. Uh, now, what we like to plot is the, uh, for example, sigma a x. Okay, sigma x. Bottom to top. Now, how do we do that? Sigma. As we remember, sigma x, uh, did we give a name? No, not yet. So we just get the, this one and, and give a name. So this is, remember, sigma x, k. This is a sigma x, k1. So sigma x, y at the bottom. Uh, this needs to be called index. Uh, sig x k k 
comma, this is a prime number. And what is what needs to be this guy? This needs to be K1, oops, K1 and prime number. Right? So if we plot here, copy and, and paste, and this is the a stress through a bottom to all the top including two value at the interface. So as you can see, if we plot them, and, and this is the exactly what we expect. Is it? No. We need to change the X and Y coordinate. Does anybody know how to change the X and Y? I, I forgot. But anyhow, uh, we can just plot this way. So, oh, what did I do? We select them and we plot, this is exactly what we expect. This is the A. This is exactly what we expect. First prime, bottom, top. This is a stress. But the, this is the a, a linearly varying within ply, but see this one at the even same surface, same location, this stress is this much and this much, but this ply has this much. Why? Because this is the 90 degree, uh, zero degree, this is a 45 degree, and this is a minus 45 degree, and, and so on. And another one we like to plot is the, how about the, Epsilon X, Epsilon uh, X, okay? Epsilon, do we have Epsilon X? No, we don't have Epsilon X. We like to have Epsilon one, okay? You know the difference between one and X. One is the O of axis. So how we get the Epsilon one? Huh? Epsilon one, ah, this guy, right? This is the uh, sigma one and so on. So this one, we just a, uh, we can equal index, uh, app, uh, what was it? E, E, E one and K comma, uh, display and this one and second ply but top, I mean, no, same ply, but top. So we just copy and, and paste. And as you can see, if we plot them, let's see uh, what will happen. Oops. Okay, so as you can see, this is a strain. When I bend, strain inside is always a straight, linear, regardless of angle. That is the one we really need to remember that. Why? When it's between, it cannot slide, right? It cannot slide, each ply, they are attached together. So when it bend, they always have to move together. So if the interface always a smooth curve, smooth strain, but this ply, okay, 
I better put these things into a side by side this way so that we can see, uh, we can have a same ply. This is the same ply, and this is the a zero degree, 45 degree, <laughs> minus 45. Huh? Oh, it's not right. Okay, sorry, uh, I'm gonna plot this way. This is the um, strain and this is the, a. Uh, oops, stress, okay, and side by side. Uh, I'm sorry, this is correct. Now, this is the bottom ply. A little bit smaller. See, this is the A1 ply. As you can see here. This is a bottom ply, and and then this is the a uh, forty five ply, and this one is the minus forty five, and and so on, and and that was the what we specify. Remember, we specify a oh, isotropic. Is it isotropic? Oh yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm a little confused. But this is isotropic, okay? Uh, uh, sorry, this is isotropic, and this is the linear. Uh, I will just jump to a jump to a, a composite. Uh, this that was a stress of transformation. That was that's why it was a step, step, step. But uh, here, I like we like to choose a uh, material composites and number one and choose old and uh, number one from here and and core we enter the zero uh core is a zero and 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 uh well let's forget the core for a while okay so for that to do that this this and here we enter thickness is a zero uh oh, sorry a zero here so we like to have we like to have a, a zero thickness and then we have a quasi isotropic plies okay so we uh, forget this two ply is zero thickness okay and now we have a all a zero proper 45 minus 90 and so on and this is all same thickness all composites now what kind of strain we will have we will have a, a strain goes like that. Okay, this is a crack. This is the A0 and 45, 90, 45, and minus 45, and 90. And strain is always a linear. As you saw before, isotropy, composite, it doesn't matter. Strain is always linear. But stress, they are different. Why? Because we multiply Q matrix here. We this is strain. We multiply Q, multiply Q over each ply. But Q is they are very, they are different. So that's why we have a this and that and this and even sometimes like that and, and so on. So that is a very interesting, very important behavior of a composite. Okay, so. Uh, Now we like to add a other terms, which is epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon six. Okay, 
and also uh, sigma x and sigma y and, and sigma uh, x. So here we like to add as a, a two and for that purpose, uh, well, let's just change this one as the name, uh, as a, as a uh, ply. Uh, okay, let's call number of, uh, num uh, number of ply. And we give a name, uh, this one as the, uh, a number of applies. And now instead of that, all we need to do is just a number of apply. And, and also, also this is the a number of uh, apply and copy and uh, uh, paste and, and, and copy and, and paste. We don't need to worry about this column. And here, instead of one, we just change it to a epsilon uh, two and change it to a epsilon two and copy and, and paste. And, and here, instead of epsilon two, epsilon six and epsilon six. So this will be a epsilon six and, and copy and, and paste. Uh, we do the same here. Uh, let's see, this is epsilon k. Uh, first, we like to change this is the what? Number of apply. And this is the, um, number of apply. And then x, x, and this is the epsilon one, and this is the, uh, okay. So copy and paste. And this is the sigma x and, and sigma y and sigma s. This is own axis. So this is the a y. Uh, y and this is the s and this is the uh, instead of uh, this has to be what y and this has to be y and copy and paste so as you can see when you program doesn't matter in excel and fortran or c or c sharp your name has better to be consistent and very easy to convert, very easy to maintain. If you change the variable uh, from time to time, it's not so good. It's very difficult to find the bug, uh, very difficult to uh, program that. Okay, so uh, uh, let's confirm one more time. And this is the, a, uh, a plot of this all three strain. Uh, Yeah, in programming, you need to be patient as well. I'll just make a, a look good. So all you need to do is just select that and then a uh, plot and, and uh, what the hell is that?
Okay, now we. I'm sorry. Uh, we. can change that. I'm sure there's a different easier way to change the X and Y. Uh, yeah, Excel is excellent, except this graphing. Graph is, is a terrible. We have uh, so much good tools for the uh, plot, but this one has no 3D space, uh, and it's not so it's that. Uh, do uh, is anybody knows how to change the X and Y? I forgot. This one has to be Z one to six. Uh, is that this way? Is it changey? Um, you know, these uh, two axes. Theta. Oh, this is the A changing. How do we change that? We like that? No. Uh, we like to have an axis, a Z is here, and this is a. Uh, This is what? This is the. Hi. See, what we like to do is the, this is a Z, but we like to have a vertical as a Z. Okay, it's a simple question. I don't quite. Uh, See, all the days we just click, okay. Now, okay, here and Z. What I like to do is that we we just a uh, this represent the X, I mean the horizontal axis. Okay. Okay, okay, let's be a little patient here. Okay, I hate to do this, but let's plot this guy. Okay, and, and plot this man. I'm sure some of you already know this. Okay, now we got the, this is vertical is a Z and this way. Uh, let, let me, yeah, sometimes we need to be, uh, A little bit uh, stupid. So this, this, so let's plot, uh, okay, do it one more time. Here. So, okay, and then do it one more time here. Okay, oh no. Uh, cut and paste and and this and now uh, okay let's clarify this I like to to go through all the steps with me uh, I don't want to just bring here uh, so select that one and and plot and you got this a, this is the epsilon x, horizontal value, thickness is a z, right? Now, we like to have this guy, 
the same as uh, previously. Uh, this one as the this way. Always vertical is a z axis. That's the our purpose. And this one, I'm sure there's an easy way, but I uh, cannot concentrate right now. So this is the how. Uh, can we just copy and paste? Yes, copy and paste. Okay, finally. So this one, as you can see that, uh, this is a strain. First ply, second, third, and this is a ply coordinate. And this is the compressions and tension. And the other way, compression and tension. And this one is the shear uh, strain. Okay, uh, well, it takes a little time, but we have to have it. It's very uh, important, very important uh, procedures to judge. Uh, okay, that is that. I feel very stupid, but uh, okay. This is a Z sigma X, and next is the uh, sigma Y, and this one, the last one is a shear stress. Okay, shear stress. Okay, all good, all good, and let's have this guy and copy which one okay. this one put in into a uh, all the uh, same uh, one and, and let's delete okay like it a, a, a simple and here this is a strain and this is the a stress finally and let's make a copy and put into a, a nice clean shot and here, okay? So this is, uh, we can call, ah, uh, finally, output. So we, and, and uh, okay, we can make a, another window and we can uh, have a, a two window together. Oops, we already have it, huh? Okay, so here, same sheet but different window, so that we can see how we change this value and, and see how uh, they are changing, okay? This is a strain and, uh, okay, this is a shear. I, I like to change the color. I like to change it to to uh, a uh, green. I like to change it. Which one is the shirt? Is it? No, no, I think this. Is it this? No. Is it this? Yes. Okay, this one I like to, uh, this one I like to change the color as the uh, uh, green. Okay, All right, I'm sorry it took some time, but it should be very easy and very uh, clear. So this one, uh, well, yellow is the one direction, and blue is the two direction, and this is the uh, shear. And this is the what? Sigma X. And as you can see that, if we change, okay, if we change, if we change to, uh, this is the, uh, first of all, let's change it to all zero degree. All zero degree. Let's see what happens. 
all zero degree and very important observation stain wise like that with top and bottom with the tension with the tension and compression <coughs> and the other one this way is a, a anti curvature is a compressions and tension so this is the anti curvature since this is, a, a, is all zero all ud here no shear no curvature no no twisting so all zero now stress wise plate we only apply this bending stress wise is no stress here so only this stress components deformation wise we do have this curvature but stress wise no no stress only sigma one since we apply this one and, and that is the effect of a constancy uh, uh, ratio zero degree uh, and as you can see uh, you can play with now we like to add a core let's add core material number four five and the core uh, sorry core is number four and and we like to change this one uh, to to here and core uh, let's make it a little bit thicker uh, say 10 millimeters and angle as we uh, before we change the angle let's just enter this core okay right we just enter the core as you can see uh, As you can see here, this one, we have a core and apply strain. Regardless of a core, whatever number, it doesn't matter, always a linear. But material property of this core, really small, is almost a zero. So this is a composite and all zero degree. So linearly varying compression and tension, but core, as you can see, is zero. And this stress and that stress, tension and compression, that is con caused by the moments. Now let's do, do uh, a changing a uh, angle, say 0, uh, 45 and minus 45 and 90 degree. And, and I like to show you all together uh, dynamically. So 45 minus 45, this is the core, and this is a 90 degree, and this is the minus 45, and this is a 45, and this is a zero degree. And as you can see that, the strain as a mason always like that, and this guy now is the core, uh, has no stress developed, but bottom skin and top skin, we do have uh, this much uh, uh, stress. On axis stress, by the way, on axis. So even 45 ply, 45 is on axis stress. Um, okay, so this is the A stress. Uh, pay attention, even in one stress, one ply, there is a linear stress a variation, a same material. Yes. In the stress vector, there is a big difference. There is a uh, more structural problem. You mean here? And big difference area. There is no no problem in the structural structural problem. Program. Problem. Problem. Yeah, problem. Uh, <coughs> so you you mean there is a no stress and no problem? I mean there is a, exist a very big. It's just difference. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. That area, there is no problem. Okay, yeah, I understand, okay. His question is that, his question is that, uh, 
oh, between this guy, this ply, this, this ply, and this ply, this stress is like that. Oh, this guy's stress is like that, okay? And in between, there's a big jump, right? Big jump. Well, if you look at the strain, uh, always a linear. This observation, again, thank you for asking. So important, really important behavior. Let's forget this composite. Let's try to have only two uh, bimetal, only two material together, okay? Just two material together, and then we somehow extend it. This is the A-steel, and this is the aluminum, okay? And then we, we expand it together. Now, imagine the strain-wise, strain will be always just a linear, same, right? They, they, they expand it together, strain. So strain will be like this. This is the epsilon, whatever strain component. How about the stress? Well, stress aluminum, you have a Young's modulus, 20 gigapascal, Alu um, aluminum, still 20, aluminum is about 70. So stress-wise, this guy is uh, this much, and, and aluminum is stress-wise is this much. Do you agree? Right? So uh, there is a, a, uh, a terminology called traction, but uh, let's forget that. The stress component is important here. Stress component means this is a stress in this way, right? This way. As long as the stress is in this way, there's a no problem at the interface. Okay? Stress is along this way, there's a no problem at the interface. Even though there's a jump, it is no problem. Just imagine this one. If you plot this one, there will be no stress developed at that point. The problem we would have is that at the interface, we, we would have a, this kind of a stress and that kind of a, 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 a shear stress. That would cause certain kind of a problem. Four o'clock. Why you become so... <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that does not cause. So if we apply this way, will be big problem because here uh, all the stresses will be uh, caused by here. That would cause a separation, uh, debonding, and and delaminations. Okay. So uh, this one is the implant sigma x x sigma y uh, x x, but here. The stress component of which will cause the problem will be ZZ, ZX, and ZY. That is the stress component is separate and shear and, and, and another shear. Other than that, this will un un cause any problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other question? Actually, this is the one that I like to cover today. And, and sorry, uh, it was already Oakland. And, and uh, okay, well, I like to upload this program, okay, for your reference, uh, which you, <coughs> the main thing is that, you know, this kind of a, a, a plot a functions, and I don't want you to spend time. <coughs> But just you know, uh, refer this one, and then uh, uh, for for your uh, homeworks and and whatever. Uh, but if you want, uh, I mean, you you have to plot. Uh, you have to program up to here, okay, yourself in your program. I mean, you Excel, and then you adding. You, you just refer to to uh, my uh, refer means this one, okay. Uh, you. Actually, this value is comes from comes from uh, here. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, 
Okay, uh, sorry again, it's a little bit late, but don't go to sleep. Uh, well, as I mentioned, you may have another uh, reason not to come here, but then we have a rules, you uh, let me know, one day before, and then three times maximum. You know, if we don't have these rules, everybody, uh, no class, no one will be here. Only myself, I don't like that. Uh, three times is okay. Okay. But some people from uh, industry, uh, you may have another I mean, four. <laughs> okay. But uh, in, in, in class, uh, let's stick to a three times. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will let you know the homework. Homework is again, you have to program this much. And then I will specifically the, uh, assign the numerical homework. The reason why not me to give a numerical homework is that I will give you time to do this. And then uh, just, you know, uh, three days, you have to program uh, for generate a numerical result. Okay, that's why I send you a, a homework later. Okay, thank you, and then see you uh, next week. <coughs>